In this lecture, we're going to introduce classes. Classes are one of the most fundamental concepts of object-oriented programming. Uh, we could spend hours talking about the building blocks of OOP, but for right now, I just want to talk about how to create classes and, and use them. In a later section, we're going to start to dive in deeper into some of the concepts in object-oriented programming. So for now, let's just look at creating them. So Groovy classes are very similar to Java classes. They have methods, properties, they can have the same access modifiers like public or private um, as Java classes. But there are some differences and we're gonna look at those and kind of talk through them. So first, if you create a class in Java, let's say we called this um, Angry Birds. If we created this class in Java, we would need to have that same name as the class name within that file. In Groovy, we don't need to have the same file name. It is not, um, it's also not a requirement, but a convention is usually recommended to capitalize the first letter of any class name. So if we were to just call it bird, we could do that. Um, in our case, if we wanted to create something called Angry Birds, we could do that. So let's go ahead and create that file. And let's open that. Um, something else, so when we're in our Angry Birds file, we would think to see a class called Angry Birds, but again, you don't need to have that there. Um, we could call this whatever. We could have this foo if we wanted to. But let's create a class called Angry Birds. And I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm gonna create two more classes. One called Bird and one called Pig. So this is a, uh, another thing that I wanna talk about. Um, that one file may contain one or more classes. Um, but if a file contains no classes, it's basically considered a script. So we have three classes here. I'm gonna save this and exit out of here. And what I wanna do now is actually use the Groovy C, uh, which we talked about earlier, to compile my Angry Birds class. And I want you to think about that for a second. What would you expect the outcome to be when you compile that Angry Birds.Groovy file? So I'll give you a second to think about it and we'll come back. So I'm gonna do a directory list here. And if you guessed that three different classes would be created, then you were right. So we have our Angry Birds class, we have a bird class, and we have a pig class. So even though we defined three classes within that one file, when the compiler takes over, it compiles three separate classes. So at this point, let's open up this class called developer. And we're gonna start building this out. So first off, we're just gonna call this a developer class. Now remember, all classes and methods by default are public. So saying that is the same as not saying that. That's why you'll see just a lot of class declarations as class developer and not having that public modifier on there. So that is that. Now what we wanna do is start to create some properties. And again, all properties by default are going to be private. So we don't need to set those up. So I'm gonna say string first string last and then I'm gonna use def languages equals that so we just have some properties there um, the first one is the first name and it's of type string we have a last name of type string and then we have this def keyword which is basically just not typing out our variable languages even though in this case it's gonna be an array list um, 
we're going to talk more about def as we get into this course, but for now, just know that I just don't care what type it is at this point. Okay, so those are our properties, and now what I want to do is create a method called work. So I could say public void work. Um, again, all classes uh, and methods are public by default. So we actually don't need this. I'm going to just take that off. And all this is actually going to do is print out um, first name, last name is working. OK, so that's our method. I'm actually going to close this out. And let's go ahead and open the app that groovy. And what we're going to do here is do a few things. We're going to start using that class that we've just created. So now what I want to do is I want to create an instance of a developer. So to do so, I can say developer D equals new developer. So that's going to call our no arg constructor. Um, we didn't have to create that one in the developer class. It's there for us already. And then what I want to do is actually set the first name and last name. So let me type something out real quick and then let's talk about it. So there's actually a couple ways that we can do this. On the line number three there, we're saying d.first um, and we're setting the value of the first name to Dan. So it may look like we're actually like accessing the property, but really all that's doing in turn is calling the setter that was created for us. Remember, for every property we have there, it's going to create a, a, a getter and a setter for us. Um, and then the second is just calling the actual setter method. Either will work. I prefer uh, this one just because it's shorter, less typing, don't have to actually call a method. Um, I, it just seems cleaner to me. But you can do either or. And now if we just say D, again, the last line in this file is going to be executed and the result will be returned. So now basically what's getting called is that two string on the class. So it says we have a new developer, the first name, the last name, and then the list of languages. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually assign some lang uh, languages to this developer. Um, the first thing we want to look at is, you know, we, we assign this uh, languages variable a def keyword. So what type is it? One thing you can always do, the same way that you can do in Java, is actually ask for a particular properties type. So we can do this by saying d.languages.getClass.getName. And if we run that, we'll see that it's a java.util.arraylist. And we can even shorten this down to just class. So we have a, a, an array list here. And what I want to do is go ahead and add some items to it. So what we're looking at here is something we're going to talk about in this course, which is operators and operator overloading. And we're actually going to use the left shift operator to go ahead and add items to our array list. So in this case, I'm going to add Groovy. Java. And then if we print this out again, we should see that we have some languages in our list now. And finally, I want to just be able to call a method. So if we have an instance of our class, this D, we can call that work method and it should print out Dan Vega is working. So I think we're going to stop there. Um, we're going to take a deeper dive later in this course, like I said, but I hope this gives you a good brief introduction into classes and how to use them. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the next one.